Grade 8 Math, number 4.1b, represent linear relationships using graphs. A linear equation, see we're talking about linear relationships, so a linear equation is an equation whose solutions are ordered pairs, you know, x and y, that make a line when graphed on a coordinate plane. They can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b, and that's when b doesn't equal a zero. The relationship between the x and the y are non-proportional. The line doesn't go through the origin, 0, 0. Well, in the previous unit, 3.3, we saw the x value as input and the y value as output. The equation y equals kx represented a proportional relationship with k as the constant. Remember the constant of proportionality? Well, now the equation y equals mx plus b represents a non-proportional relationship with m as the slope. So remember in the slope formula, it said m equals so the equation can be written with m, a coefficient for x, and with addition and subtraction, like this. You remember what a coefficient is. It's the number in front of a variable. So this is the m. The 6, 3, and the 2 would be the m part of the equation. See? That's the coefficient for x. We can have either addition or subtraction behind the x, okay? So here's our equation, y equals mx plus b, and this is the problem that you used in the last video. This is the word problem that Emma bought a tomato plant that was 10 centimeters tall and each day it grew two centimeters. So you can see how it lines up with this equation. The 2 is the m, the slope, x is going to represent each day. So the 2 is the two centimeters it grew every day and the 10 is going to represent its original height of 10 centimeters when she first bought it. And we can show its growth over a period of four days. So x is the number of days, y is the height in centimeters, and we can do our math and fill in this table with our x and y values, and all we have to do is multiply this by 2 and add the 10. So the first day we have 2 times 1 is 2 plus the 10, so it's 12. And then we have 2 times 2 is 4 plus 10 is 14. See? We fill in the rest of the table. Now I like to write it vertically and they do that in high school and college. And the reason I like to do this is because if you look right here, it shows our xy coordinates very, very simply just by going across, see? Now, if you look at this number two here, this coefficient for the x, that ends up becoming the slope, and I'll show you. So, here we've got our graph, okay? And you can see our line is coming up to the right like this, so that means it's going to be a positive slope. If you've seen my videos before, you know if the line is heading this way, it's going to be a negative slope, and it's going to have a negative number. So it's going this way. We know it's going to be a positive number, and we can actually look at the rise versus the run. The rise is how much this, the steepness of this line is going up vertically, and these go by twos over here, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, so each box is a 2, so it's going 2, 4, 6. That's the rise, the vertical rise. And the run is the horizontal change. Now if you look at this x line here, you'll see that each of these digits are only going up by a single unit. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we count three boxes, that's 1, 2, 3. So our rise is 6 and our run is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Yep, our slope is 2, just like it said here, okay? Just like m is 2 here. So, we can do this using our coordinates, can't we? So, I chose this to be point 1, our coordinate 112, and our coordinate 4, 18, is going to be our point 2. So, that's this one is point 1, and this is point 2. And I subtracted y2's value and y1's value from each other and got 18 minus 12, which is 6. And then I subtracted the 1 for the x1 value from the 4, which is the x2 value, and I got a 3. See? Because that's the slope formula. You take the second y value and you subtract the first one from it, and you take the second x value and subtract the first one from it, and you get this proportion, this ratio of change in y values over change in x values. Okay? And we end up getting our 6 over 3, just like we did when we counted it here. See? And we know that our slope is 2 m equals 2. The slope is 2. Now, look at this. Why is this considered non-proportional linear? Well, it doesn't go through the origin. In the last unit, all of our lines went through the 0, 0, didn't it? And this one doesn't. 
it's hitting the line Y right here at the 10. That's the Y intercept. That's why it intercepts it right there at the 10. So now you know what a Y intercept is. So it doesn't go through the origin 0, 0, so that makes it non-proportional. So let's look at the difference here. In the last unit, we did proportional linear, and now we're doing non-proportional linear. Let's see what is alike or different about them. Well, the proportional linear, well, it graphs as a straight line. Well, so does the non-proportional. It made a straight line. The proportional went through 0, 0, the origin, right here when we drew our line. Ah, but the non-proportional doesn't. It doesn't go through the 0, 0. It hits the x or the y, uh, y line at a different point than 0, 0. See, like here it's hitting it at 10. The proportional one has a constant rate of change. And the non-proportional one has a constant rate of change. It's changing 2 for each time for the steepness, isn't it, for the slope? So that's how we can represent linear relationships using graphs. That wasn't too bad, was it? Did you understand that? Now, if you're having any trouble, it's like walking into the middle of a movie and trying to understand the story. I've got maybe eight or ten of these videos talking about slope and building up to where we're at now. If you don't understand, maybe you need to go back a few videos in my grade eight playlist. Maybe go back to 3.2 or 3.3 and start watching them from the forward so that you can catch up to what we're doing. I would hate for you to get lost doing all of this, okay? So we're going to continue talking about uh, slopes, and now we're going to talk about the y-intercept in the next video. But you kind of have an idea of what it is now, don't you? It's where the line is hitting the y-line, right? All right, I'll see you there, and you'll be fine. Bye.